Hello and welcome to week number six. And in this week we will talk about plotting with matplotlib. Matplotlib is um, probably the biggest plotting library for Python and it can be used to uh, achieve many different kinds of plots uh, ranging from normal graphs, uh, plotting time series for example, over images and uh, yeah, you can also do audio analysis with it. Uh, so it, it has many different purposes and we'll cover some of them in this week's lecture and give you an introduction of how you can do some basic plotting using matplotlib. Okay, so first of all, um, matplotlib has a nice online documentation and um, it includes examples and the API documentation, of course. But what is very interesting is the gallery. So matplotlib has a gallery with many examples doing very different things. And this is a great way of um, yeah, understanding how you can achieve different styles and uh, kinds of plots. And it just shows you how you can do lots of things um, using matplotlib. And um, yeah, this is part of the gallery. Uh, it just shows many examples. So the plots you can create in these examples. And if you have questions about some kind of certain plot you might want to do, um, this would be one way to check if there's an example for it. Just go through the um, gallery and see if you can find it. And if you click on any of these, I don't know if, you, if we have a look at these stream plots, um, we can see these, the example, and then we've got some code of how we can uh, get this. Okay. Then just a quick note on backends in uh, Jupyter Notebooks and um, in Matplotlib in general. Matplotlib can use different backends used for plotting. And these backends mean um, that it's a different program which attaches kind of to Matplotlib and actually does the plotting. So actually drawing stuff uh, in the background. And Matplotlib is just basically an API to these backends and um, provides a certain, yeah, and yeah, a defined way of accessing these different backends for different machines, different purposes, different operating systems, and so on. And in Jupyter notebooks, we have to use a certain uh, a certain backend. Well, there are basically two options, but um, we will start with the inline one first. And the inline backend is one that um, yeah, just can create matplotlib figures inside the Jupyter notebooks and then display them as static figures. And we can have a look if we imp import matplotlib here and we uh, print first the version and then the backend, we can already see that um, it found out that we're inside a Jupyter notebook and it automatically um, used this PyLab backend inline, which just means that um, we are ready to start and we can just use matplotlib here because it already knows which backend to use. So it will figure that out automatically and normally you don't have to do anything for that. All right, um, then just um, quickly, if you want to change this, so if you're, for example, not in Jupyter or you want uh, to have a different backend in Jupyter, you can use this magic and this magic uh, starts with a percentage sign uh, followed by matplotlib and then you just state the name of the um, of the backend. And in this case, it's uh, just inline. We can execute this. And yeah, this just does nothing. But in the backend now, the backend, uh, yeah, in the background, the backend was set to inline now. And if you want to uh, have like, more knowledge on backends in matplotlib and how everything works, you can go to this link and um, have a look at how matplotlib describes the different backends um, which it uses. Okay, so let's start with the anatomy of matplotlib plots. These plots are all contained in figures and um, these are all terms that um, yeah, are very common in matplotlib and they're standardized and used by everyone basically to talk about different parts of this whole plot. So what the figure is, as you can see here, this whole thing is a figure and if you just run matplotlib in a Python script, then you'll get a window uh, which pops up and this whole window is your figure. So uh, including these buttons up here and everything um, in there, that's part of the figure. And then you have different things inside. And this big white thing in the middle um, where you're actually plotting stuff on, that's called the subplot or the axis. And uh, these are 
yeah, not really equivalent, but uh, subplot is just a term which um, is used for these uh, axes which are aligned in a grid. And axes can just be anything that you plot on and it doesn't have to be uh, locked into a grid. Okay, and then these axes or subplots, they have x axis, an x axis and a y axis. And these x axis and y axis objects, they um, themselves have different child objects. For example, uh, they have these tick labels and ticks, and they just indicate uh, yeah, the scale of your plots, for example. And we'll get into that uh, later on. Okay, so let's get started with Matplotlib. First of all, we have to import uh, PyPlot, and PyPlot is basically the submodule of Matplotlib which is used for normal plotting. And there are different submodules um, which are used for different things and there's some for changing the styles and so on. But if you just want to um, get started with plotting, you just have to import matplotlib.pyplot and uh, usually it's imported as PLT. So this SPLT uh, of course means that it just renames um, this long name as PLT. Okay, and we also import NumPy because that's just useful. First of all, we create a figure and we save that figure in the uh, variable fig. And we do that by just calling plt.figure and this will return us um, yeah, a figure object. And by default, this will not show anything. You can see here it said um, it created a figure with a certain size and it has zero axis. This is because we didn't add anything to this figure and it doesn't know um, yeah, what to show. And if you're not inside Jupyter, this would have um, already um, uh, created more in the background. <clears throat> and then if we call this show, this would actually show something already. <clears throat> but if we're just in the Jupyter notebooks, this plt.show doesn't show anything yet, because the inline backend of matplotlib will only show things that have access inside them. Okay. <clears throat> Now, how do we create these axes? We can create axes using the add subplot method, which we call on figure. And to this method, we have to pass some uh, variables, as uh, some, some parameters. And in this case, we pass 111. And um, this 111 is a, yeah, a short way of saying we want one row of um, subplots, <clears throat> we want one column of subplots, and the subplot, subplot we want to access is the first one. And here, Metrolib starts indexing at one. So the plot that we get from this add subplot is actually the first one. And uh, here we just create one. So this uh, will return as the one plot subplot that we created. We could always uh, we could also separate these ones by commas. Um, so pass them as individual arguments. But uh, Metrolib supports both um, just writing them as one number or uh, separating them with commas. And if we execute this, we actually see our first plot. And um, yeah, it's just a rectangle with some axes here. And uh, it shows nothing because we didn't tell it to draw anything. But now we've just created an, a subplot inside a figure and are able to display that using plt.show. Um, okay, so if you want to change the size of this figure, you can pass the fig size argument to the figure function. And um, this argument expects a tuple with two values. And these values are the width and the height of the, um, of the figure. And Matplotlib, uh, the documentation says these values are in inches. But this isn't always correct, um, especially in Jupyter Notebooks, because here is some, uh, some, some different scaling can also imply. And sometimes it's a little confusing if you're thinking about these values um, specifically in inches. So keep in mind, they're supposed to be inches, but it's not always 100% true. But now, as, we, as you can see here, um, we, we created this figure, which has a width of 5 and a height of 10. And um, yeah, this shows in this rectangle here, it's uh, higher than it's wide. All right, and if we want to change uh, the look of our plot and also how it behaves. Um, there are lots of setter functions on these axis objects and um, we'll cover some of them in, the, in this lecture but there are just so many and uh, some of them are um, useful in only very certain cases that 
Um, yeah, we'll just show you how to access some of them, which are the most important ones, and um, yeah, tell you how you can find out where the where the others are and what the others can do. And um, if you want to get a list of them, you can just uh, in the IPython kernel or in the Jupyter notebook, um, just write x.set underscore and then hit tab and the auto completion will just show you all the available options for the setters um, that you could want. And this is also how all the setters and the syntax for all the setters is. So you, they always start with set and then have an underscore and then the, the attribute that you want to set. And in this example here, the first one we have set xlim and xlimit, uh, xlim stands for xlimit, so the limit of the x-axis, meaning from um, which value to which other value the plot should show um, your, your data. Then the second one, ylim, is uh, analog as the xlim, just for the y-axis. We can set the title for a subplot. This is just the name which gets displayed above the plot. Um, and then we have a Y label and an X label, which are the text that uh, is written at the X axis and Y axis. All right, so this looks good. And um, it might be a little tedious to always write these setters. So you have to write set something for everything that you want to set. And um, for some plots that you might want to have in a very certain style, you will have to call lots of uh, setters and it gets a little messy. Um, so therefore, matplotlib has this um, set function, which you can use to set multiple um, multiple attributes with just one call. And this set will uh, accept keyword arguments, and these keyword arguments tell it, um, yeah, which attribute should get which value. And um, in this example here, we do exactly the same as above, but we just call x dot set once. And then we pass xlim uh, with a certain limit, uh, then ylim with limits, and so on. And this can be um, just a little cleaner if you want to set multiple um, attributes at once. And yeah, if you don't want to have lots of uh, setter calls. And what matplotlib will actually do in the background is translate this set call to multiple set something calls um, using uh, just the keyword argument. So it puts um, it calls set underscore keyword argument, and then in the parentheses it puts whatever is the value of this keyword argument. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, this doesn't always work for everything you want to set. So sometimes, for example here, um, with x dot set x label, uh, you want to set some label, but you also want to specify the size, so the um, how large the text should be. And this doesn't work with the uh, set function. But for that, you have to use the dedicated set x label function because set only accepts one argument per attribute. And if you want to have multiple arguments for this x label attribute, you will have to call it directly. Okay. Now we'll start with basic plotting and actually drawing something in our subplots. And for that, uh, we first of all create this uh, figure again. And then I'll add our subplot here. And then the first function that we'll get to know is plot. And plot will just create a line um, following some data. And here our data are just two arrays or two lists. And uh, the first list is just one, two, three, four. These are the x values. And then we have 10, 20, 25, and 35, which are the y, uh, the y values um, corresponding to these uh, x values. And if we show this plot, you can see yeah, we created this plot. Our data is here. And um, the x values one, two, three, four are just where our values are and uh, the y values um, are corresponding to these x values. And you can also see that uh, matplotlib already scaled these axes um, without us having to tell it that we want to have a plot from 1 to 4 and from 10 to 35 on the y axis. It will just automatically figure out how large the, um, yeah, the range of the data is and um, scale this plot accordingly. Okay, and um, we can also call this plot function multiple times. Um, if we want to add multiple lines to our plot, then we just uh, call x.plot twice. And here we just got two different lines which correspond to our two calls to plot here. And you can also notice that 
Here we just passed one argument to uh, extra plot, only one list. And what this will do is just interpret this one list, um, this one parameter as the y values and uh, just use a normal range, um, a Python range as the x values. And the range, of course, starts at zero. So here our x values start at zero and go to uh, three. Since we have four values, uh, we can have the x values zero, one, two, three, four, uh, zero, one, two, three. Okay, and you can also see that um, Matplotlib already assigns a different color to new plots um, and it will do this in a cycle so it has um, a couple of colors saved which are the default colors and um, it will cycle through these colors whenever you call the plot function multiple times and this is just very convenient to um, not having to write too much code um, to achieve um, these plots where you can see already a lot so if we would have like five different lines, um, they would all have different colors and it's very easy to understand um, yeah, which line is very, is, is which, is which um, yeah, is which data. Okay, then something that might be a little confusing at first uh, when using matplotlib is that we have two different approaches to creating these plots. And the first approach, which we will also uh, mostly use is the object-oriented interface and the other one is the state machine interface. And what this means is that um, <clears throat> the first one will create an object and we've done that already using this axis um, and add subplot will create an object of the class axis. And we've used that so far to do our plotting and this would be the object-oriented interface. We don't have to do that. We could also use the state machine interface and here we don't create this access object, but Matplotlib will do that in the background. <clears throat> so if we don't add uh, the subplot to our figure, um, we can also just use the stored subplot by Matplotlib in the background and just call functions directly with PLT. So most of the functions that are defined for the access object are also defined in the PLT submodule. And you can just call, for example, plt.figure and you don't have to save this figure because um, num uh, because Matplotlib will save that somewhere in the background. Then after that, you can just call plt.plot and it will already know that it should use the figure that was just created and then plt.show to show this figure um, because it knows which figure we were talking about. And as you can see, this also works and it's just a different way of, um, yeah, of working with Matplotlib. But, um, yeah, some of the functions are also called differently. So for example, for the object-oriented interface uh, with the axis, we had, for example, x.setXLIM, whereas for the pyplot or the state machine interface, we have just .xlim. So here you can see the call would be plt.xlim, and then we, cast, uh, then we can pass two arguments, um, yeah, which are the x limits, um, and the call for the axis would be setXLIM. So this is one difference um, that you can see. And the reason for us using um, the object-oriented interface will be that for larger plots, it will be much easier to work with the object-oriented interface because the pyplot interface will just get a little confusing if you have multiple subplots in the same figure. And for example, you define a function which should add something to one of the subplots then you want to uh, pass a certain access object, which should be modified. And uh, you can't do that with the pyplot interface. So there you would have to rely on uh, Matplotlib having stored the correct access in the background. And uh, yeah, this can get a little bit confusing. And uh, as the Zen of Python says, explicit is better than implicit. Um, we, we, are, we should also use the um, the object-oriented interface because it's not as implicit. Um, we have our actual object and it's not implicitly stored in the background of Matplotlib. Okay, then what if we don't want to use just one subplot in our figure, but we want to have two different ones, for example. Then we can use the subplots function and this is called on PL, the uh, PLT submodule and um, this is actually also a call from the uh, object-oriented interface 
because it will return uh, the figure and axis. And in this case, axis is not just one axis object, but a NumPy array of multiple axis objects. And um, yeah, we create this by calling plt.subplots, and then we can pass it uh, the number of rows that we want and the number of columns. So subplots will, uh, will always be organized in a grid, as I already said. And here we can just tell matplotlib how many rows this grid should have and how many columns um, for our plot. And then if we show this, uh, we can see that we got two rows and two columns and um, yeah, just empty subplots here. All right. So now if we want to index these different subplots and plot um, some actual data in them, then we can uh, just use the NumPy indexing on this axis object. As this is a NumPy array, a 2D NumPy array, we can just use our square brackets and index them with integers. And um, yeah, for example, we can just set the title of all of them um, just to show which one, uh, which subplot index corresponds to which subplot in the figure. So 00, zero would be the top left one, uh, zero 01 the top right one, and uh, yeah, so on. And then at the end here, we just call layout, And this is a very convenient fun function which uh, takes care of some of the layout work and it will try to um, reduce the overlap because if we add the titles here you can see already this is very uh, like cluttered and very close uh, everything and this tight layout will create some space between these subplots and make room for some titles okay and as you can see here we've created our four subplots and they all have the corresponding title all right, great. Now, this subplots function is very useful and it is not only used to create multiple plots, but you can also just create um, a single subplot with it and uh, by that replace this, uh, these two lines of plt.figure and then fig.add subplot. So if we just call uh, plt.subplots and don't pass any arguments, it will just create one subplot and um, yeah, return the figure and this single axis. Okay, and um, yeah, just as um, just to show you, um, we can also add a title to our figure itself. So um, not only our subplots can have uh, titles, but the whole figure um, on its own can also have a title. And this is called a super title. And um, you add that using this fig dot subtitle. Um, and yeah, you just pass it a string, and it will create this um, title up here. You can also change the font size and the font itself, of course. Um, these are just further arguments in this subtitle call.